What's up, what's up, everyone? This is Vaughn Bethel coming to you from Greenville, South Carolina, and my company, REI Junkies. I just want to talk to you a little bit about one of the exit strategies, and it's actually primarily our main exit strategy, and so many people ask us about it because it's very unique, and it's something that not a lot of people out there are doing right now, but it's the rent-to-own, or you may have heard it as lease option, and potentially an owner finance strategy. We like to call it rent-to-own housing. It's going to be the first of a four-part series talking about rent-to-own housing and why we use it as our primary exit strategy. Uh, we feel that it could be a strong strategy for a lot of other investors in the market today. So this episode or is going to be the first, like I said, of the four-part series. We're going to talk more about rent own housing and how does it work. So it's one of the most common questions I get from people when they ask me why I do what I do. So let's jump into it. It's a very unique real estate strategy and not a lot of people know a lot about it. They have heard of it, but they don't know the inner workings and how to make money off of it and how to use Use it as a long-term strategy. We're also going to do a little overview of what rent on housing entails and the growing popularity in the real estate market over the course of these next four episodes. So what is rent on housing? Rent on housing is an agreement that combines a lease with the option to buy a home. So when you're talking about people coming in and as investors, we purchase properties and usually we're buying and holding those properties as rentals or long-term rentals and just bringing a tenant in to pay a monthly rent or we're flipping that property for quick cash. Well, we wanna combine the two, the best of both worlds and create a rent to own housing market that also helps provide a pathway to home ownership. So that's how we originally got into rent to own housing is to figure out what is the biggest impact that we can have in our community. The next thing we're going to talk about is the lease period. So in rent owned housing, a tenant or tenant buyers, what we call them, they rent the home for a predetermined period. Usually it's one to three years. We typically like to keep it at 12 to 24 months or one to two years. When they sign that original lease agreement, they're also signing a option agreement which has the option to purchase the property at the end of the lease. So that's where you get lease option from, or what's more universally known from the consumer standpoint is rent to own. So that's why we like to use the rent to own verbiage. If we're gonna talk a little bit about the mechanics of rent to own agreements. So there's a couple very important things that you wanna incorporate if you're gonna do the rent to own strategy or lease option strategy. And the, one of the very first things that you wanna make sure you have dialed in is your agreements. So talking about the mechanics of rent to own agreements, in your agreement, the tenant signs a lease agreement to rent the property first, right? At the same time that they're signing that lease agreement to rent the property, the tenant is also going to sign a separate agreement with an option to purchase the property or option to buy the property as well. So you want to make sure that you have two separate agreements, the lease agreement and then the option agreement. Also in that lease agreement, you want to make sure that you clearly define the period of that agreement. And what I mean by the period is, is it going to be one years, two years, or three years? I've seen some people do it up to five years, but you want to make sure that you have that clearly defined in your agreement. And then the other thing that you want to make sure is clearly defined in that rental agreement or the option agreement is, is there going to be a part of the monthly rent that is going to contribute towards the eventual, eventual purchase price of that property. Now I've seen this done both ways and we actually have a percentage of their rent payment go towards the purchase price should and when they exercise the option. And I see some people that do it to where there's no part of the payment that goes towards the purchase price. So this is totally up to you, but you wanna make sure that you outline that and have it clearly defined in your original agreements. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the benefits for buyers. And you may hear me refer to these as tenant buyers as we go on, but you know they can be buyers, tenant buyers, borrowers, whatever you wanna call them is, is completely up to you. But here's three really good bullet points for why this strategy really helps a potential buyer or tenant buyer. Number one is credit building. Now, rent to own allows tenants time to improve their credit score. Now, this is essential for securing a mortgage. So most of the people that are going to come to you and do a rent to own agreement probably has some type of thing that's affecting their credit or affecting their purchasing power when they go to a traditional bank. So putting them in a lease agreement for 12, 24, 36 months gives them time to improve their credit. And that's a very important thing. So when they do go for traditional financing, they can get approved and get a better rate. 
The second biggest benefit for buyers is it allows them time to save towards the purchase of the property. So a portion, like we mentioned before, a portion of each rent payment is often set aside as a credit towards the future purchase of the home. Now, some of our tenant buyers, actually all of our tenant buyers, we require a pretty significant option fee or down payment. But we also give credit of each monthly payment towards the purchase of the home. So they're building equity should they decide to purchase that home at the end of the option period. And then the third thing is the price lock in, right? So tenants, when they sign that lease agreement and then they sign that option agreement, they are locking in the purchase price of the property at the start. So this is protecting them against market price increases during the rental period. Now, there's another strategy that you want to make sure that you incorporate at the very beginning as well is when you they lock in that purchase price, you want to take in consideration possible appreciation over the next one, two or three years when you're locking in or you're setting the purchase price for that tenant buyer. So let's talk about some of the advantages when it comes to sellers or us as investors, right? So by doing the rent to own strategy, rather than just having a rental, rent to own agreements typically attract tenants who are more likely to take better care of the property because they're going to have some pride of ownership because they're viewing this as a potential future home. And we want them to progress and exercise that option. So we get a lot better quality tenants when we do rent to own housing or rent to own as an exit strategy. The second thing it does for investors is it provides us with steady income. So we get consistent rental income during the lease period and we don't have to worry about the ups and downs and vacancies and, and maintenance and repairs and things such as that. Now, I just mentioned maintenance and repairs there is a strategy that we write into our agreements, and I'm going to talk about that in a later episode, but you can do a rent to own agreement where you're not having to manage or pay for the smaller maintenance or repairs that comes with home ownership. And then the third biggest advantage for investors or sellers is the ease of sale. Right. So as a flipper and we're putting a house on the market, that house could potentially sit there for a while. But in the rent to own strategy, it's a very, very good strategy and very effective, especially in a slow market. Right. Because what it does, is it, it widens the pool of potential buyers or tenant buyers that may not be able to go out and compete on the purchase of a home that's on the retail market. So there are a couple considerations and risks that you want to make sure that you're factoring in when you're considering doing the rent to own strategy. Number one is making sure that you have a clear understanding of the terms. Right. In order for the tenants to understand the terms, you have to understand the terms. Right. And then we have to make sure that the tenant, the tenants clearly understand the contract terms when or before and when they're signing that original lease agreement and that option agreement. They need to clearly understand what the option fee is and if that option fee is going towards the purchase price. They need to understand if any portion of their rent is going towards the purchase price or what we call rent premiums. And they need to ha understand that they are locking in that purchase price should they exercise the option in one, two or three years. The other thing that we have to make sure is clear is that the tenant understands the risk of loss. And what I mean by that is that if they don't meet the meet the conditions of the lease agreement and the option agreement, the tenants risk losing their right to buy the home, but they also risk losing the option fee and any rent premiums paid. And then the third thing that we want to make sure is that you seek legal advice. And we also recommend that the tenant buyer seeks legal advice as well. So we always say it's advisable to seek legal counsel to ensure that the agreement is not only protecting you, but it's also protecting the tenant's interest as well. All right. So we're going to wrap up this short episode and just kind of wrap it up in a couple of bullet points. So we went over the rent to own basics and, and just put it simply, rent to own is a lease agreement with an option to buy the property. And that typically lasts one to three years. So they can exercise that option anywhere in one to three years. There's mutual benefits for both the seller and the buyer, right? So it helps potential buyers build credit and save for a down payment while providing sellers, us, the investor, with steady income and a potential sale down the road. The third thing is, how are you going to structure this financially? 
right? Are you going to include a portion of the monthly rent that's going to contribute towards the future purchase price? Are you going to take an option fee? How big is that option fee? Uh, so you want to make sure that you are clearly defined on the structure of your rent to own strategy. And then the last thing is a couple key considerations. It's essential to understand the contracts and the potential risk for both you and the tenant buyer. And I highly, highly recommend that you seek legal advice before employing this strategy. So that's going to be it for today. I'll be back here shortly with episode two of this four part mini series on rent to own housing and how we employ this as our primary exit strategy.